Hi, this is Brenda Sue from Pisu Boutiques, and it's so nice to be with you again. I'm ready to show you another knotting technique this week with some real colorful and fun beads. I think you're really going to enjoy it, and guess what? It's easy. So, come on over here, and let's do it. Okay, so last week we had some fun with knotting, and we did tassels, and I did this real chunky little fat thick tassel with melon beads and the Greek ceramic beads and some wooden beads and whatnot that I had here. They're all things we have at Bisou Boutiques. Um, but I really didn't finish it off the way I really wanted to because I found that I personally preferred a longer tassel than this, so I'm going to monkey with it design-wise a little bit. But it came out really cute. Boy, it did photograph nice too, I thought. But anyway, so this is the start of it. So I did that again here, and we did this together actually last week. We did the start of it, and I sh was showing you how to knot the tassel because I had completed the other one first. And this is a longer one. So if you want to know how to knot the tassel, it's the video just previous to this one, the one I did last week, if you want to scroll back to it. Um, so anyway, so what I did, this is real simple. There's only a few little fussy places. I took... And I cut off about 40 inches of cord, which is way, way too much. But I found that when I got to the end of it, I'd rather have a lot to play with instead of a little. Because if you have a little too, if you have too little, it gets really hard to finish it off. You know, it's fussy, you can't get it through the loop and all this. It's just better to have a lot of extra and trim it off even if you lose it than have to go through that. So anyway, so we've got um, the, the cord is on. The little aglet here the little hole and i just did a lark's head knot i don't know if you can see that here just really close up and you know what i'm going to pull it loose a little bit so you can see I, this cord is double all right it's not just one single strand i need to be, be sure to tell you it's doubled so the length of it going one way is like 22 inches or something so it's over 40 inches long doubled but I, what i did is i took and i made um, you know let me just take it off i made the loop we had a little of a false start, and so we're starting again. But anyway, basically, you just double it, and you put it through the, the hole. You can do it going front ways, you can go back ways, whatever's good for you. But then you've got to get the cord through it. So basically, you just put the bring the cord up through the loop, okay? And then, see? Then just pull gently till you get to the very end. And then you pull it tight. And it's very good. It's very good. So now we're going to start beating it. So what I do is I start by using it double. So you want to have big hole beads. So I took my little ceramic gear bead that we have at the site. And I pushed that one through. And then I have one of my big hole melons, which we just got a new shipment of them the other day. So there's lots of them at the website, BeesaBoutiques.com. And I put that through, okay? So now I have these both through there. Now if I wanted to, I could just knot this here and just keep going up the same way till I got to the end and just go that way. But I like to do this like kind of a staggered loop over loop knot. So that's what I'm going to show you for something just a little different today. So first I need to go ahead and I need to put my knot in here. And as I explained to you, this is kind of organic style. It's not like when you're knotting uh, you know, semi-precious stones or beads um, that are expensive, you know, or anything like that. That kind of knotting is what I call jewelry store knotting. And you have to, um, you know, be very, very precise. This you don't so much. So if you have a little bit of space between the knot and the hole, it's not the end of the world. Okay, so now I've got my knot in there that I pulled up. And now I'm gonna separate my cords. So I can do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to thread stuff onto here. So I can get my beads up. And it can just be really, really random stuff. It doesn't have to be, you know, all precise or nothing. I have a nice little melon bead. We just got these in there, four millimeter, but they have a big hole. So they go on real fast and easy. And then here's one of these tribal book bicones that we just got that in too. It's a really cool cool and it has a bigger hole so it works now if something happens and the end of your cord frays a little bit you know um, just cut the little 
a little bit of it off, and it'll, it'll go back together again. Be good to work with. There are other things you can do too. You can uh, sometimes uh, you can melt it with a bic. I don't know. I haven't tried it, but they say you can. <laughs> so anyway, some other things you can do. I just cut it. And we've got plenty to play with. Okay, so I got three on here. Now I'm going to knot it. Even though there's nothing on this other side, you don't want anything on the other side. So I'm going to pull that up and I'm going to knot it. It's going to be kind of loop over loop. You're going to see what I'm talking about in just a minute. Okay, so I'm going to pull that up nice and tight. Some suggested last week you could get a, a bead all or something, a beading all, and stick in there something with a shorty, short, uh, pointy end and stick it in there to get your knot nice too. And that's fine. You can do that. I actually like a little play in these sections to where I can move them around a little bit. If you don't, you know, try and get them tighter, but um, that's another thing you can do. I just have always done it with my hands because, you know me, I like the loosey-goosey look. So that's what I go for. Okay, so the next one I tried, I tried one of these barrel beads that are in the boho bead mixes. It's wood. So I got that on there, and I'm going to do the same thing now. There's another knot coming up. And again, it doesn't have to be just right up to the hole, unless you just demand that of yourself. I like a little play on it when you do this loop over loop style, okay? So this is good. This is just fine that it moves. Okay, so now I'm going to take, and I want to do this top one now because I did the bottom one last. So let me find a few little beads on here that's going to work. Um, do. You know what, I used that last time. I'm going to change it up a little bit. So I'll put this. It would probably have been good if I had these all pulled out previous. But just, we just had one of them mornings, if you know what I'm talking about. Who cares about that anyway? We want to have fun. It's about the joy. Don't let anything take your joy. Not even a crazy day where you want to pull your hair out. It's not worth it. Be happy. Be happy. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just, you know, I'm just going to put them on here. If I had more time, I would probably search for the same ones I put on the other side, but it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Unless it matters to you, then you have to do that. So, okay, I'm going to put a loose knot. And pull it through kind of, you know, close. Doesn't have to be skin tight to the hole, but close. Okay, so now find out where my knots are going. This is that one. So now I'm going to do the bottom one. And I think I will do another wood bead if I can find with a big hole, enough hole. Sometimes when they drill the holes out on these wood beads, um, they leave no particles and stuff in them, so you can still use them, but you have to clear the hole out. So I found another one, so that one worked good. I don't want to have to stop and do that right now. You just take a little beading all and just poke it through, get the stuff out of the middle, and then you can use it. But fortunately, that one I have to, so now I got another bead knot here. Okay, let's see. How many do I need to do? Because I want them to be even. I The first one, then one, two, three, four... I've got one, two, three, four, okay. One, two, three, four. Just checking, one, two, three, four, okay. So I need three more, okay. So now I'm going to do the one on the bottom. And I have these patina beads we have on this side, they're acrylic actually, but they are so cool and they're not a bit easy to find. They're really, really cool. So we have them in almost all of our boho bead mixes. We have, I think, two at the website now that are boho bead mixes. And these are ones that have acrylics in it and they have um, wood, sometimes a little bit of glass, sometimes ceramic or pottery, just unique mixes. The one we have right now has macrame spools and I mean it's just really cool. It's for a person who really wants to exercise their imagination. But anyway, patina beads are almost always in those mixes. They're one of my little favorites. And you have to search for them to find them. Okay, so I've got two more sections that I need to do. So I went under that time, so I'm going to want to go over. 
And this time I've got a little melon bead here that I like. And let's see what else can I do for a little color. Oh, these. These are Tombow beads. They were made in Japan in the 60s. They don't make them anymore. And they're actually like Millie Fiori. They have kind of a small hole, but I find that lots of times I can get my cord through it. Now, I'm going to have to trim it just a little because it's one if I, I will probably be able to get that through there with a little bit of playing around. So you don't always have to have, you know, the so-called no-hole beads. You just have to play with it a little bit, and I'll probably go through Starting. Okay, there we go. It's going through. So I need another one of those little baby melon beads. Baby melon beads. Okay. I, call, I like the name, baby melon beads. Baby melon beads. Yeah. Baby melons and big mama melons, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you can get really big melons, I think. I've seen them. You get them. like up to like 14 <gasps> millimeters. Oh my one. goodness. That's, yeah, a big, but that's a little bit bigger. Like I like to stay like 10 millimeters. 10 millimeter, 8 millimeter, 6 mm -hmm. millimeter, and sometimes once in a big while, a 4 like this, if it's like got something going on like that one does. Um, but that's what most people seem to want to buy too. So that's what I usually get. One, one left. I just want to make it match up. So I got to do one more. I went under on that one, so this one I'm going over. So let me pull this out. Get it out of the way, and I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. Huh? I'm gonna do another little melon just because I love them. And it, this is just really random anyway. It doesn't matter so much what you use. You know, just have fun with it. You know, if you want to plan it all out and have it all, you know, just a certain way, then that's mm. great. I didn't do that before I came down here, so now I'm just having, kind of having to go with it. But that's okay with me because I'm, you know, I'm Miss Random. <laughs> I like randomness. Okay, so we're almost to the end, and here's where it gets a little bit fussy. Okay, so we're going to knock this last one, and we're good to go. There are a lot of ways that you can finish cord off. You know, somebody might be looking and say, why don't you tie your ends and your loops on your ends first? Um, well, I couldn't because I had to put loops down here. So I've got open ends on this one. So now I'm going to have to find a way to close it. The easiest way to do that is usually a crimp. But then try and find a crimp that works with this. I mean, they're out there. But... Normally, I think the biggest you find them a lot of times are just like three millimeter or something. So they tend to be smaller for other things. So um, I like these ones. They're from TerraCast. And you can put two strands through that. But this is the way that I do it. I double this. And I, I've got my little, so you see I've got my little loop there. I double this, and I'm going to just twist it a little bit and double it. And then the trick is, and I loop it over onto the other side so I get this out of the way from where I'm working. Now the trick is to try and get them the same size of a loop, and that's, you may not always get that, but just aim for close. Once again, this is, you know, a loosey-goosey project. Okay, so I've got it like this. I want to get it stuffed through the crimp, which, voila, I did. Okay, now here's what I can do to get a little bit more even. I like to take the end of a pencil. So I'll, since I have a lot to play with, I can pull up on it and get my pencil in there. Okay, then I'll take it and I will draw it down to fit the pencil. This way, it'll be the same, okay? Now the trick is to keep it like that while I crimp it and not have it move. I'm just going to take my flat nose, and I like to try and center it if I can, but it's not always possible. You could maybe go through the middle and give it a little crimp first. I think maybe I'll do that. I just don't want this to stretch out and get super big. I want it to stay like my pencil. If you have to go back and do it again, that's fine. You might be able to leave your pencil in there while you do this. I did upstairs, but it took me a little time, but maybe not. Maybe not, maybe this is best. So I'm gonna go from this side 
and crimp it really good. I love these things. They're pewter, but you can squish them right down. I mean, I can't have enough of these. I love these tear cast crimps, and they come in like an old silver, and they come in this brass ox, and they come in gold. I think you can get them copper, too, so I'm not going to take my guy out of here, but I might have to kind of twist on it because I got it really good and tight, but that's okay. That is okay. All right. Now, see, I've got a loop almost the same size. Cool. Once in a while, you learn a trick or two. I figured that out all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now what I want to do, I'm just going to give it another little crimp, just, just for giggles. I'm going to crimp it in the middle, too. A little bit. But anyway, we have these tear cast crimps at the site, and I hope soon to be carrying more, a little bit more tear cast because they just, you know, I love my Beast of 1928 line, but they're just things that, you know, it's more focal space, and, and the tear cast has more like parts and findings that you need. So what I did is I took my cord coming out of there, so I still have a good bit to play with, and I pulled one side out to this side, one side out to this side. So now I'm going to turn it this way, and I'm going to start knotting it, just simple overhand loops, like this if you're going to start tying your shoes or something. But try to get them tight. Okay, and I'm going to go down quite a ways with them because I want to cover a lot of that so it'll just look more finished. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to loop through. Oops, no I'm not. Okay, Put the, pull, the, pull the little end through. Okay, I was really tickled about how the other one came out. It came out really nice. Now the trick is to get them both looking really nice, huh? Have you found that to be true sometimes? I'm going to turn it over again and knot it again. And usually it's going to take about five or six, you know, knots to get it. I, I like to get it all filled in there. See, so it looks really completed. So you can see here it looks really completed. Although this one end is soft and it's starting to come off. And the reason is I needed to put a little drop of the super glue in there before um, I cut it. So that was my mistake, but I can fix that, so not a big deal. You won't do that, right? Mm -mm. That's why we're not going to cut it off in this video, because I didn't have super glue down here to do that. Mm. <laughs> but anyway, you want to get it really good and tight, but remember, it's still a single knot. You don't want to tie another knot like right on top of that, going to stick up. You got to get them flat. So let me see compared to this one. Yeah, I'm going to stop here. So what I'm going to want to do is take a little bit of jewelry super glue or even hypotube cement. Just put it like right in there, a little tiny bit, so that this won't fray. And then let it dry. Then you can cut it off and you'll be good. So all I need to do here now is I need to put my... Um, jump rings is I don't like to hang directly on to the string because I just feel like oh um, you know maybe it'll rub around it probably wouldn't but I just don't want to fray and come apart because I spent time making this and I want it to be nice and I want to enjoy wearing it or if you make your jewels jewelry to sell that's what you want too you want quality or if you make it to give it to a gift you want to keep those good gifty feelings going by making something that's going to stay together and that your, your person that you gave the gift to will for sure enjoy it for a really long time. So I put two down there just for strength and then I'm going to do another one through there. See, Almost like this is how you make cable chain. Two there, one there. Okay, and I'm going to just go like this. Alright, now I can hook it. Get it nice and flush, like I always say, and I can hook it. So, you can, I'm going to hold it up. You can see what it looks like. Okay, mm -hmm. so there I've got it. I might have liked those to be a little bit smaller. There are a lot of ways you can do it. You can take it and you could uh, take 28 gauge, 28 gauge wire and twist around it. I've made videos where I did that and that works. You can tie it off. There's ways to do it. Um, but I like crimps best. 
especially these tira casts. So anyway, just to show you how it all looks, this is going to come around the neck probably about mm, 20 inches long, 19, 20. So that's just about perfect for a necklace like this. And then this comes down, let's see how far. It's a little bit dramatic because it's longer. So it's going to come down a little over six inches. So yeah, that's going to be showy, you know. So there you go. The only thing I could say about this necklace that I really would have liked to done different, besides pattern my beads out a little bit more before I came down here to put them on, um, would be I have some big spaces in here. And I want to point that out to you so that you'll know what you want to do. I left a little bit too much space on this one, this one, this one. And so my beads are just kind of coming down. You know, like it, it could have been fuller. I shouldn't have gone out that far. I would say probably when you do this, let's see how long that is, the one that's too long. It's like an inch. almost an inch. So maybe make it like, uh, go like a half inch, three quarter of an inch, and then knot it and put another bead, and then you'll keep it nice and full. So anyway, I hope you like this project, and I'm going to have another one for you next week because I know how to take this necklace to the next level yet and really make it super duper showy, fun kind of thing, and you can really have a lot of a creative fun with doing it. So we'll do that next week, but for this time, go get yourself a bunch of beads, why don't you? All you need is a piece of, of uh, like, when did I use, like, 14, 16 gauge wire here, and I bent it, and then I looped this on here, put my big hole beads, you saw what I did up the sides, and voila, away you go. So you could probably make this in maybe less than an hour, if you plan it out, lay your stuff all out ahead of time. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching us today. It was exciting to be with you, and I'll just mention really quietly, please like and subscribe to my channel. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And you guys have a happy, happy Friday. And let's do some beating this weekend.